welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Previously on the Bard's Podcast, the group arrived in Colby and turned the prisoners over to a grateful populace. They discovered that they had arrived just in time for the annual Shorning Festival, and a party was scheduled for the evening hours. Two rooms were obtained and split between the sexes, with peepers being secured in the bedchamber with the females and had so far gone unnoticed. Magistrate Horatio Mellon has rewarded the party and will seek out the owners of the recovered property. We rejoin the group after lunch as they separate to go enjoy the town life. Broad grins cross the face of Cabe Silvertongue and Lady Irena before glancing over at the young woman who opted to accompany them. The elven members of the group noticed that Karina appeared to be puzzled at the layout of the town. What's wrong? asked the mage. Karina snapped out of her stupor and shook her head, muttering under her breath. Cabe asked her to repeat herself, and she reluctantly did. I said the people here all seem so happy. It's not like Phoenix, where people are just trying to avoid each other. Cabe and Irena looked at each other before laughing and hooking their arms with the young waif. Come on, said the bard. I think you'll find people a lot friendlier in a small town. A bit shocked but feeling safe, the trio began to skip across the street towards the mercantile section of town. With the two elves on her arms, she began to feel happy and free knowing that she was safe with her associates. As they wandered down one of the streets, they found people selling out their wares from clothing to food. Street performers were preparing for a festive event, and Karina did her best to take everything in. As the group dodged horse manure in the street, they found themselves at a small booth. An elderly woman at the shop was selling colorful scarves that immediately caught the waif's attention. She reached out to touch one of the fabrics, but quickly withdrew her hand. The vendor looked at her quizzically and told her that they wouldn't bite. Karina managed a half-hearted grin and pointed out that she did not have any money to make a purchase. She quickly became annoyed as Lady Irena and Cabe Silvertongue burst into laughter, causing her to flush with anger. The pair saw her angry look and stifled their amusement. Lady Arena put her hand on the girl's shoulder and jingled a coin purse. My dear, we have plenty of money. We share the pain and we share the rewards. Karina looked at Cabe who pointed to the stack of scarves advising her to pick one or two, however many she wanted. Tentatively, the young woman reached out and examined a white scarf with blue flowers adorning it. The bard reached into his pocket and pulled out a few silver swords and placed them in the merchant's hand. Spotting the coins, the woman thanked him profusely and gave the waif a blue scarf with white flowers on it. Here, you have to have both. They are a matched set. One for your hair and one for your neck, my love. Karina smiled broadly as Arena and the merchant woman put the scarves in place, garnering a positive nod from Cade. A loud growl escaped and he admitted he was still hungry. The trio thanked the woman and moved to the other side of the street to a food vendor. Karina kept running her pretty new scarves through her fingers, smiling confidently. Well, what do you think, big man? said Bolger the sailor. Think this place can quench your thirst? Fargus Stoutheart looked up to the sign, seeing that it was called the Rusty Nail, and considered it for a moment. Suddenly, the doors opened to the establishment, and a drunk was thrust out onto the street at the pair's feet. The ranger turned to the squat gnome and shook his head. This looks like my kind of place. Bolger bowed dramatically and the two stepped over the drunk in the street and entered the dark and smoky establishment. Fargus nodded his head and the pair moved through the busy tavern to a small table near the bar. Jumping up on the stools, a busy barmaid quickly came over to the pair, asking for their order. Fargus pulled out a stack of gold coins and told the woman that they each needed two pints and two pints once the first pint was done for each. She quickly reached over grabbing a gold piece and plopping it down her shirt for safekeeping. The ranger grinned and asked if he could reach in and get change. 
The barmaid smacked him playfully with a large toothy grin and pointed out, Perhaps later, big boy. Bulger smacked his forehead as the woman quickly slipped away to fetch their beverages. Change? Are you kidding me? The large human looked confused and held up his hands. That is your go-to line. Can I get the change? Shaking his head, the sailor began to laugh when the pretty woman promptly returned depositing four pints on the rickety table before leaning in and nibbling the man's ear quickly. A look of smugness covered the ranger's face as Bulger quickly drew back his drink, shaking his head. <laughs> Humans, he muttered. The pair continued to drink for an hour, and the barmaid always being close by to refill the men's mugs. A fist fight erupted at one point between two patrons, and the two adventurers were quickly impressed as the Leith woman grabbed each one by the ears and tossed them through the front door. The pair nodded at at each other and Bulger advised Fargus that he may reconsider his choice. Fargus smiled and winked at his new associate, stating, eh, like I'm feisty. Upon the waitress's return trip, Bulger asked how a little thing such as her could toss those men out without fear of reprisal. She introduced herself as Winnie and pointed out that she could do what she wanted as her father owned the establishment and no one ever crossed him. As the sailor began to ask another question, a booming voice rattled the table and mugs. Winifred, I told you to hurry up! Yes, Papa, came her meek response as both Bulger and Fargus turned to see the source of the voice. Bulger was taking a drink, but it poured down his face as he observed the largest man he had ever seen. Fargus held his drink motionless at the sight of the individual. Glaring, Winnie's father turned around and went back into the kitchen area. Bulger wiped his beard off and looked at Fargus. That thing must be half ogre. He makes you, he, well, he makes you look like me, exclaimed the gnome. He then finished the rest of his drink and pointed at the ranger. I'd be careful about touching her if I were you, my friend. Her daddy can probably break you in two with his bare hands. At this point, Winnie waved sweetly at the ranger, but was pulled into the back by her father, who glared at the human adventurer. With the blood leaving his face, Fargus gulped loudly. Ay, Bulger, you may be right about that. The pair finished off their drinks and quietly left the bar, leaving a substantial tip for their vigilant waitress. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.